Hello, I'm Marites Vitug. Welcome to Raptor Talk Investigative. The Philippines is hosting the Miss Universe contest this week, the third time it is doing so. In the 65-year history of Miss Universe contests, three Filipinos have brought home the crown. Joining us today is one of them, our special guest, Miss Margie Moran. She won in 1973, and her life didn't stop there, of course. Margie was a peace advocate for Mindanao, where she worked with various NGOs. Currently, she is president of Ballet Philippines and a trustee of Habitat for Humanity. Thank you very much, Margie, for joining us today. And I think the first question that's in our minds is, uh, you were 19 then when you joined the Miss Universe and won it. Uh, why, did you do, why did you join such a contest? And have your views changed on beauty contests through the years? Well, I had really no plans of joining the beauty contest, and I actually tr tried twice. <laughs> you did? Uh, only because I was egged by the designers, my, my designer, Oji mm -hmm. Cordero. In those days, the designers were already active in the mm -hmm. Bilibili Pilipinas uh, beauty pageant. I was a model mm -hmm. while I was in high school, so I was shuttled between St. Teresa's College to Hyatt, uh, Hyatt in Ross Boulevard to do my noontime fashion shows. And, uh, and, and back to school. And so um, my, when it was, I was 18 first mm -hmm. when I was asked to join the pageant and my dad said, no way. <laughs> <laughs> when, I was, when I became 19, I was asked again and this time my father was, and my parents were in Davao because my dad was recuperating from, uh, from surgery. So I asked mm -hmm. my grandmother. My grandmother was a carnival queen during her time oh. in Pangasinan. <laughs> and of course, she said yes. She, was, she became my guardian. And my parents didn't even know I joined the pageant. So to me, I had, when I was a child, I had no plans except I loved playing with dolls, with, with Barbies and, and, uh, and paper dolls. So, you know, beauty was always in my mind. Mm -hmm. But I never had really thought of ever joining a beauty pageant. So to me, I felt it was just a, a, an adventure. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I joined it without really any plan to win. But when I was there already in the pageant, of course, like, you know, I've kind of mm -hmm. win this. <laughs> and when my father found out, he only found out in the newspaper the next day when I won. <laughs> and he told me, it's a good thing you won. <laughs> <laughs> so you, uh, looking back at that time, you know, um, 43 years, 44, 43 years ago, yes. uh, would you recommend joining beauty contests? I mean, to those who really have a chance of winning. I would recommend it if they want to join it, if they would ask me, but I would not recommend it out of, out of just recommending mm -hmm. it, no, because um, it's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some that, that need it to, for us as a stepping stone. I didn't use it as a stepping stone. I, I, like I said, it was to me an adventure. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even finished with school yet. I was first year college. But if I was asked, and if, if, it's, if it's somebody who I know, I feel has a chance to, to, to join it and win, I would recommend it, yeah. Uh, but you don't see beauty contests as, you know, as, as some of the critics say, you know, it just uh, commodifies beauty or it just makes women subjects of ogling and commerce. You know. Well, it does. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, 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 uh, we all have our choices, you know, uh, you just define yourself as a woman in any way. Um, I would say in all my, in the 43 years that has passed since I, I have had that crown, um, it has become part of our culture. Every mm -hmm. fiesta, every, I, in fact I just came back from Nueva Ecija mm -hmm. in, in a town called Munoz and I, I was asked to crown uh, Miss Munoz. <laughs> so it's in every city, every municipality. The the mutia is is part of it. It it dates back to the carnival queens of my lola's time That's in the right. 1920s, 1915s. So it's it's really mm. part of our culture, and I don't I don't think uh, many people see it as a commodity to commodify a beauty. But in the same token, it has become, it ha it's always been commercialized. Beauty mm -hmm. is a big industry. Right. And everybody looks up to a beauty, those who are in, in part of a, a beauty uh, commodity or a beauty industry, let's say mm -hmm. beauty, beauty uh, salon, the, the beauty mm -hmm. beauticians, 
the dis fashion designers, okay. skin doctors, and now even wellness is part of beauty. Yeah. So it, it's a very big industry and um, being part of it, I don't think there's anything wrong if it's something that you will make use of positively. And um, I, I feel that uh, a woman can, should make her own choice of what she wants to do with, with her life. Do you think that this is a part of our Spanish influ the Spanish influence on our country, the Carnival Queens, this, this beauty uh, contest? I, it could be, because in, in America during when I was in, I lived in New York when mm -hmm. I won, and I attended many small beauty pageants in small towns. They even had the Miss Tomato, Miss Harvest, <laughs> Miss, Miss Everything, and it was not really a beauty contest. It was, you know, somebody that would represent uh, something of her village. So I, I feel that it's part of representing a community. Mm -hmm. And like here, it's you represent a, a, a town, a small town, or you represent your country. Yes. But in the end of the game, when you're in the contest, it's really about you. So it's, it's really like about how you look or how you project yourself. It's so it's not, I thought it was a distinctly you know, Filipino thing. Of course, other countries have their beauty contests, yes. but here, as you said, every town, every city mm -hmm. has a beauty contest. And I haven't watched the mo the documentary Sunday Beauty Queen. Yes, I've seen that. <laughs> yes, so Still, why? Still, they were in Hong Kong already. Exactly. So the beauty contest was the center of this uh, mm -hmm. of the of the Filipino domestic workers in yes. Hong Kong. Yes. So so yeah. it's I think it's also not just about being beautiful. It's it's part of entertainment. And it's, it's a way of making people happy. Uh, beauty brings beautiful uh, things and, and thoughts to, to people. So it's like a diversion mm. from everyday life. And people look up to it. It's, you know, it's even in beauty contests in um, the small towns, they have shows. It's part, you know, mm. and parcel of another uh, show that a barangay can present. It's a venue. Mm. So that's why uh, Filipinos, a number of Filipinos really like and look forward to watching you know, Miss Universe or mm. other beauty contests. Yeah. So some people are saying, oh, but this is a destruction. There are so many problems in the country. What do you say well, to that? We need criticism? destructions. <laughs> <laughs> we need destructions also. Because <laughs> we can't have, we have to have positive things in life. Mm. You know, and I, this is some, something that's positive. And uh, we can't live through negative uh, energy all the time. How has the, after you won Miss Universe, your life didn't stop. I mean, you grew, you matured, you became a peace advocate in Mindanao. Yes. Maybe you can tell us why you chose to do that for a certain number of years. I, I you know, it, it all started with my TV show. I had March on Mindanao and I went around Mindanao. I even. I uh, went to the MILF camps when it was still at their strongholds. Mm -hmm. So I, I, it was a, and you know, I think uh, if I were not Miss Universe, they would not entertain me there. <laughs> <laughs> what would have they thought I of think you? They were, they were interested <laughs> to meet me. Mm -hmm. And I met ha Salamat Hashim, we have pictures mm -hmm. together. I, I've been to Liguasan Marsh when nobody went there. And I was protected by the MILF during those days, and this was during the, two, two, the year 2000, I think, that early, as early as that. Mm -hmm. And um, so seeing the whole of Mindanao, and uh, when I was asked by, by Indai Santiago, who was then uh, heading the Mindanao Commission on Women, to, to join them, so I did join, and, and I found it very interesting. It was a very strong advocacy for peace in Mindanao. Mm -hmm. so, um, were there lessons you, as you said, if you were not Miss Universe, they would not have met with you? Yes. <laughs> I think, you know, I did not have to introduce myself. <laughs> but were there lessons maybe you learned during those years that you were actively promoting peace in Mindanao? I learned many lessons that, um, that because we, we, we promoted the campaign Mothers for Peace. Mm -hmm. And in those days, there, was, there were conflicts. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we decided to campaign among women all over Mindanao because there were many women, people didn't know Mindanao and they, they mm. always thought that the war was the best option. Mm. 
those times. So we, we campaigned among women so they could influence their husbands to, to take the course of peace rather than war. Mm -hmm. And we negotiated uh, with the MILF, with the government as well, for the ceasefire agreement during the time of uh, President Arroyo. So maybe that was one, so Miss Universe, the title, uh, broadened your life experience? Or it, if you weren't Miss Universe, do you think you'd, you'd have been doing these things? Uh, I, I, I was trained, I mean, I had exposure to community work in Mary Lowell College because I, I also worked two summers I think in Tatalon mm -hmm. and so I had I was exposed to community work so and also joining Habitat for Humanity mm -hmm. was, was also community work so uh, but what was made what made it interesting for me is that because of who I am you know what I've made of myself I can influence people and I can easily talk mm -hmm. to people and be able to convince them to do certain policies. So you used your, you know, uh, fame, your mm -hmm. title yeah. to, I think, to do good for the community. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll continue. You, now you're trustee of Habitat for Humanity. So you will continue in this uh, field that you have chosen. As you said, we define, we choose to define who we are. Yes. Uh, you, you don't mind if people keep saying, oh, you're the Miss Universe? I got used to it already. <laughs> Actually, I thought that after PO one, I would be able to like retire from interviews. <laughs> it's, it's busier now than ever. So we, of the pageant, that's here. And we were talking earlier. This is the, only the third time that the Philippines yes. is hosting it in the sixty-five year history. What will this bring to the Philippines? Do you think it will impact tourism? Or? Um, during my time, it was held here. I mean, I gave up my crown in nineteen seventy-four. Uh, it was a way to introduce the Philippines to the world because when I went to Greece, they didn't even know where the Philippines was. Oh. They thought they were an island in Hawaii. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and, it was no, and, it was, and Imelda Marcos and at that time Secretary Spiros did made a good choice by by using the Miss Universe contest in promoting the Philippines, and and it picked up from there. Today, the Philippines is quite well known, not only because of uh, the age of globalization, but even our overseas contract workers are making a name for themselves because they work all over the world. So people know the Philippines, but it, this is a one-time, big-time promotions <laughs> for the country. So it's really in tourism where, where it, uh, like today, there's, there are a lot of newspaper and media people in town because of the Miss Universe. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's a venue for promoting the country. And also we were talking before the interview that when you joined the contest, you were 19, and you were asked, you know, the question of what will you do if you won with the money? And you yeah. said you're going to buy a house and a lot. Uh, yeah, I did talk to <laughs> I never, I, have, I had no idea of what the value of money was except from what I earned in my allowance. But a million is like a lot. You can buy a house and a lot. Today you can't buy a house and a lot with a million dollars. But you know, looking back, I said, oh my gosh, it was just, that was just a thought. But now with Habitat for Humanity, I'm building mm -hmm. houses and I'm able to raise money oh, that, to yeah. build houses for, for other people. But that was not the only stupid question <laughs> that I, I encountered with, I mean, a stupid answer that I, I, I did at that age. You know, when I was filling up the, my application form for Bini Bini Pilipinas, there was a question that said, who was the greatest man, who is the greatest man for you? Something like that. Mm -hmm. Everybody answers, my father, the Pope, or so I wanted to sound intelligent, and I put President Nixon before Walter At that time. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I had no idea. That was the question for the Miss Universe. It goes to the Miss Universe. Oh my gosh. So when I arrived in New York after I won, I had I wondered. In my first press conference, a lot of media people arrived, and I wondered what was so important about me that. I would have full house. <laughs> In yung palad, because they wanted to ask me why I said it was President Nixon. So how did you answer that? Well, good thing I read up about President Nixon <laughs> and all his good points, and I, I answered that because he uh, he established diplomatic ties again China. between America and yeah, China. That's right. So you know, <laughs> and I said I did. Well, I didn't even mention about Watergate. That was it. And I got a letter from President Nixon. <laughs> Thank 
love you letter. But observing all these beauty contests through the years, I mean, have they changed? In what way, or have they changed? Or they, they're just the same? They have changed. You know, during my time, we were very simple. We, we, were, not, we were not trained. Now there are schools for training. Uh, oh, it's a business. It's a, it's a business. It's, it's, um, it's more competitive now. Mm -hmm. uh, before, whatever you knew, I just read up. I just read mm -hmm. the newspapers every day, read Time Magazine, Newsweek. Mm -hmm. So that whatever questions they ask of you, and, and I ended up with the, what do you do with the one million dollars? <laughs> but at least you're knowledgeable. And um, I had my background was performing arts mm -hmm. and, and modeling, so I, I already could project myself. I could already, I knew how to walk. That was it, that was the only training. Now they're, they're trained, um, they're also older. We, during my time, we were between 18 to 23 was the average age. Why are they? Now is there a cha the, change in age uh, limit? Up or? to 27 now. Before, it was up to 25. Mm -hmm. But um, they're more matured, so they, they can answer better. They're more intelligent. Mm -hmm. because most of them have careers. They're finished with university. Mm -hmm. So um, they're more accomplished now. Mm -hmm. And social media makes a big difference. Now, um, this, you can vote online, mm. and um, you can be bashed as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> scary. <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe this is the last uh, question, because earlier we talked about you know criticisms uh, against this beauty contest. But some are saying that it limits the definition of beauty, or it limits beauty to the physical. But uh, do you agree? Because apparently there are. They also test your knowledge of you know what's yes. happening in the world. Exactly. Um, well, first they look at you physically, yeah. but in the end, you know, um, when they start, because I don't know how they, they judge now, but during our time it was one on one, you each judge. Mm -hmm. And I was told by I read it in a book actually written by uh, one of my um, chaperones who wrote the book about the Miss Universe uh, winners. Mm -hmm. And she wrote about me that she was the interpreter. She was a Brazilian, mm -hmm. and she interprets in Spanish. But she was the interpreter of one of our one of our judges, El Cordobes, who was mm -hmm. the most famous bullfighter in Spain, and he couldn't speak English. Mm -hmm. And he, she said, she wrote in her book that I didn't have, I was not in his short list mm -hmm. of possible winners. And then. So uh, when I approached him, so they, he spoke, in, he asked me a question in Spanish, and she interpreted it in English, and I answered him in Spanish. So you did speak Spanish. I did, did. speak Spanish, yeah, and he was so impressed. Like I, he said, he was so impressed that I could speak Spanish to him, and I was from the Philippines. Like he, he probably didn't know that you were under the Spaniard for three hundred <laughs> Spanish for three hundred years, but. He got impressed, and we had a conversation. So that still mm. remains, you know, the interview portion is the most important because that remains with, with the judge, mm. how impressed they are with you. Because be being beautiful is just really what they see in you at that moment. But what is lasting is, is the conversation. Mm. And uh, I re Shushmita Sen, who was a yes. dark horse, who yeah. was Miss India, India when she won here, Nobody expected her to win, but she, had, you know, she's very deep, and many Indians are quite uh, spiritual and, and very deep in their thoughts. And she answered so well that it was everyone was impressed. So she became Miss Universe. So on that note, uh, at least it has a we have a better feeling of Miss Universe. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just the physical beauty. Yes, and I think, yeah. as you said, Margie, that you know, beauty contests are really part of our culture, so we cannot. You know, we cannot just uh, do away with these beauty contests. I don't think so. I think people will be very upset. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it makes people happy. So why don't I just, can't we just be happy? <laughs> it's, it's really about you. Like, you would not want to prostitute yourself just because you're a, a beauty contest, aren't you? you know, there's really nothing wrong with it. Um, in many barangays, they don't even have the bathing suit portion. Some they do, but it, it's very decent. Mm -hmm. No, Nobody looks at it uh, as, a, you know, uh, in a bad light. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we'd like to thank Ms. Moran for joining us and uh, we will continue to watch Ms. Universe uh, this week and on the 
uh, next week when the pageant actually takes place. Thank you.